afternoon from the conservatory. Today it's time to get the garden started for summer 2021. Well, as you can see I've been quite busy recycling my pots, getting things ready. I'm basically going to use the conservatory as a big greenhouse for the next six weeks or so. And today's a lovely day outside, very sunny, cool air, but the conservatory works perfectly in these circumstances. I'm going to begin by cutting back the geraniums which I brought in in autumn last year. I want to take cuttings from all of the geraniums that I've got indoors. So there's a lot of fresh growth on the geraniums. You can see where it's very green and they've gone, they've branched out as well, some of them. So I just need to look and choose carefully. They're very hardy geraniums. So if I do cut one, like for example, if I cut this one just here, the rest of the plant will survive. And all I'm going to do is remove the leaves around the base the stalky bits remove these leaves notice I've cut it at an angle that's what you need to do with these and I'm just going to pop this in some water until I'm ready to put it in soil so I've just prepared a jug of water to put my cuttings in so that will go in there so let's look at this plant here. This is quite a thick one. It's got two uh, branches growing from it. I'm going to cut off the smaller branch altogether at the bottom. And again, I'm going to remove the lower leaves. In fact, I'm going to give this one another trim on the stalk to give it a better angle. There we go, a nice sharp point. Take that off. I'm going to leave that like that, pop that in my water. I'm going to carry on like this now until I've got a few more cuttings, so I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I'm out in the garden. I've got my recycled plant pots, which are mostly food containers, compost and cuttings. So it's simply a case of get some compost in the pots. Find a cutting, make a small hole, gently place it in, nice and deep, and then firm the soil around it. And there we go, one. Here's my first batch of geraniums. I'm just going to neaten the tops off now with a little bit of Monty Don's favourite vermiculite. Just kind of neaten the top off. I can shake it off the leaves afterwards. Just makes it look a bit nice and tidy. And it will keep the moisture in. In fact vermiculite will be doing lots for me over the next uh, few days. Quite tidy overall. Now I'm going to try and water a little bit from above, but what I don't want is the water bouncing off the leaves and going everywhere, which quite often happens. So I'm just going to give them a little bit from above. The good thing about geraniums is they're not very thirsty plants, so they don't need a regular watering. Although with these being cuttings, I will give them more than I would have done if they were established plants. Now I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour water into the tray in which they're in. And I'm going to do that in both of the trays and that will allow them to feed from beneath and it'll draw the water up uh, through percolation process into the pots. So the quite low maintenance geranium cuttings I might just go over them a little bit with a delicate brush just to tidy the leaves up which have got bits on them. But overall you don't really need to do very much. Just keep an eye on them and these should flourish. Within eight weeks I should, these should be hard, hardy enough to go outside in the garden and these are going to be part of my hanging baskets and borders displays for this year. Okay so next up I'm going to be planting some nasturtiums and these are really easy to grow flowers. Lots of colour 
nice big seeds as you can probably see in there hopefully with the camera and this is a fairly straightforward one to do so as before just fill my pots up not right to the top so my pots are full and now it's just a case of putting the nasturtium seeds on top of the soil. On the smaller pots, I'm just going to put one seed, the ones that are a bit more narrow. But on the wider pots, like this one, I'll put two seeds, one at each end. And these nasturtiums are going to be planted out in borders and in baskets. So now I've got the seeds in, I'm simply covering with vermiculite, no need to bury them in the soil and this tidies it up as well and makes it look near, nice and neat. It just wants pressing down like so and I'm going to do that on the rest of the pots. So they're all done now and I'm just going to give them a bit of water that's got a bit of feed in a little bit in the top of each pot. After the initial water I'll just water them from below in the tray. This is just to give them a wet on top. So I've got another tray to do the same as that just here and then we'll come back to this one. So that's all of these done for today now so I've got nasturtiums and geraniums and I've got plenty more to do tomorrow. Hey folks, an update from the conservatory. So going right to left, you can see that we've got plenty of green. This has been a very, very successful experiment for us. The only things that really haven't showed much progress so far are the delphiniums, which are down here. They're very, very slow to germinate though, and I'm expecting them to come through, but it will take time. There's another one there. These are pumpkins, they've done really well. We've got Lunaria at the back which haven't showed yet. The marigolds have done fantastically. Nasturtiums likewise. And we've even got some runner beans. Down here the geranium cuttings have all taken, I haven't lost a single one. And it's all looking really good. We're in very, very warm by day April, but cool by night. It's not quite time to put these out yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into the cold frame that we've got in the garden. And I've got some seedlings in the cold frame, which I'm going to bring in here. So putting these in the cold frame, will get them to adjust to the outside temperatures. And bringing the seedlings in will give them a real boost. And I'll be planting everything outside proper in about a week or two's time. So these are the outside cold frames, all full of seedlings to go indoors. So these are all from the conservatory, now in the frame. And these are what were in the cold frame which are going indoors. Give them a good wet out here and let them dry off. So some more of the plants from indoors and now outdoors. And in here I've got my hanging baskets all planted. And then finally today, from left to right, all the seedlings from the cold frame that have now been brought indoors give a better chance before they go back out again in the garden. I'll be back in a few weeks time. See you later folks. So the first lot of seeds are now all out either in the garden or in other pots or in cold frames or baskets. I'm just going to have an update of what's going on now in the conservatory. So I've planted three more trays of marigolds. I've brought some plants in from outside that weren't doing too great. They're mostly dahlias in those pots. 
No sign of my mangoes yet. The zinnia are looking a little bit sick, but hopefully they'll pull through. And that seems to be a theme with those zinnia as well. Sweet sultans are not really doing very much. My Chinese lanterns, these were rubbish last year. Hardly any came through at all. I've got two that have come through out of eight so far that I've planted this year. So hopefully they'll continue. I've just planted a load of fritil, which uh, I saw on Gardener's World. So I've, I ordered them as seeds. Uh, they're actually bulbs when you see them uh, on TV, certainly. That's what Monty had. But I ordered uh, seeds, so God knows what these will be like. So let's see what happens. And then these are just the stragglers of the other things. Uh, some lupins, mostly, and a delphinium there. Uh, bits and bobs of other things, which are half growing, half not growing. What interesting plant I'm going to plant, though, is this one. And this is a loofah. So you know when you uh, see loofahs in the bathroom that people scrub themselves with? Well, I always thought they came from the sea, but they don't. You grow them from seed and they grow on vines. So I'm going to put eight of these seeds in, into this uh, zinnia, ones that never, never happened. So I'm going to put eight into these rows here. And I'm going to keep you updated on the progress of that. We'll have a look outside and see what's going on with the plants outside. So it's a bit early to be putting some of these out, like these lupins. But they're not doing so well in the pots, so I just think I'm just going to see what happens if I put them in the border. If they survive, they survive. If they don't, they don't. And these are my best sweet sultans so far, so I'm going to plant those out as well now because they're getting a bit big for the pots. And here's the current view in the cold frame. It's a right hodgepodge assortment of different things. Quite a few geraniums there. Pumpkins looking a bit sick. They were a bit early, to be honest. Some sweet sultans at the back. Some sweet peas. Uh, dahlias. And delphiniums. And then my hanging baskets are coming on nicely, as you can see. We'll have a look around the front now at my raised bed and what I've done with that. So I've planted out the marigolds and the nasturtiums into my raised bed at the front. I've also planted out some lupins that were getting pot bound. I don't know if they'll survive or not, but we'll see what happens.
So here's the celery plant that I planted all those months back. And all these stalks you can just pick off, strip down, chop up and use them in stews. Completely edible, just like celery. There's the master pumpkin. We have tons of strawberries. We've got one set of lobelia and another set just growing underneath. Some late summer colour. Lupins, geraniums. That's our second biggest pumpkin. That one's quite a bit behind. Strawberries. Hops. And a couple more pumpkins. So the hop flowers are getting picked in three days time. And these will make wine, hopped cider, and they'll be going into some beers, all home brew. If you look at that hanging basket at the end, the hop extends all the way. Masses of flowers. I'm hoping for a, a couple of kilos of flowers, hopefully. And then the tomatoes down here, we've picked them. Chili pepper, chili pepper, there we go, more lobelia, blackcurrant just coming into autumn, and a whole mishmash of different flowering shrubs and plants down here, strawberry basket, Marigolds have been a huge success this year. Herbs. And then this is now the back end of summer, obviously, so things have begun to die back. But the late blooming marigolds have added some nice colour. And then baskets and runner beans growing up in the corner. There's a few figs hiding at the back. So the hot vine extends just beyond that hanging basket. It goes all the way along here. And as you can see, it's pretty laden with lovely hot flowers for my brews and there we go so the easiest way to do this rather than picking the flowers off the bush is to cut sections of the vine that have got flowers on put them on a table like this over here and then sit down at the table and pick It's a lot easier to do it sitting down than it is standing up so then it's just a case of picking the flowers off and popping them in a box which I've got on the floor down here and I'm going to be doing this along with my helpful wife who doesn't want to appear on camera 
for the next hour or so. Well, that's the hops picked. And here they are. Right, let's weigh what I've got. That is exactly 1.6 kilograms of hops. Exactly. That's amazing. So October garden update. It's time to cut all the hop vines back so we can remove the mesh from the fence. It's also time to start bringing in some of the plants which are a bit tender and can't take the cold temperatures. For example, the geraniums. Also to pot some geraniums up, which we've got growing in the borders. And a small matter of harvesting a pumpkin or two. So the geraniums that we've got in these wall baskets just here. I'm gonna pull those out and I'm gonna pop them up to take indoors. So that's one geranium out. So these lift out with a nice root ball on. Got plenty more down here which I've already pulled up. And these small plants will become next year's border plants. They're pretty tough, to be fair, but they just don't like the cold winter. So here's my plants, they're going into these pots. I'm gonna put gravel in the bottom, but because the gravel will fall through the holes, I'm gonna tear a bit of cardboard up to go in there as well. So there's my cardboard line pots. And then if I just drop some gravel on top, the cardboard will eventually rot and drainage will be just fine. So I'm just selecting my plants and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim them back a little bit. I'm just going to take some of the extra growth off. And in fact I want to cut these stems quite a bit back. I'll just leave one longer one. And that'll give it a chance to regrow nicely over winter. And get all the root in. You won't hurt it by touching the roots. I'm just adding some ivy leaf ones in, but I'm just going to trim them back a bit more because they're a bit straggly. Let's make them look a bit tidier. And just to add some compost. Press it down and repeat on these ones. So they're potted and now just a final dusting with some 10 mil gravel. Just to tidy it up and then keep the moisture in once they've been watered. Although geraniums don't need a lot of water. So that's these three pots done. So I'm just going to finish him off with a, a little drink. 
like I said, they don't need a lot. And then I want to leave them outside overnight and bring them in in the morning. And their home for the winter will be the conservatory. One of our local red kites. There they are, all done for now. I'm going to leave these overnight to dry off and take them in tomorrow. Okay, it's the following day, and here's what I've rescued for the winter. So I've got a number of geraniums, pelagoniums, ivy leaf uh, type geraniums. There's just a, a load of pepper plants that ended up in a pot. They probably won't do anything, but I've brought them in anyway, just there. Uh, there's some begonias, which won't survive the winter, but they will survive if I bring them indoors. And some lobelia, which are very late. And I wouldn't normally bring them in, but they will flower and they are nice. So I thought I'd just bring them in because they're not going to survive outside. And then more bits and bobs there. There's a bay tree just there, which I don't know if that will survive the winter or not. So I've brought it in. And that just here was indoors anyway, but that's a ginger plant from a ginger root. Some succulents there, which I'm not really sure what they are. So this is gonna become the winter garden indoors. Now there were more geraniums in the garden than what I could bring indoors. So they're outside still, I'll show you them. So the rest of the geraniums I've put in the cold frame. Now they've not got a lot of room for growth and I might have to keep trimming them back. But if this protects them from the cold when I close the lid, then they'll survive the winter. If it doesn't, then they won't, but I have enough indoors to be able to um, start again next year anyway. And in case you're wondering what these are, these are five litre water bottles, which I'm going to attempt to grow a potato in each one next year, so we can see through them where the potatoes are. So it's really that time of year now where we're just tidying back. So that's the plants, and that's all the plant pots put away for the winter in there. Just giving these a water. I should probably water them maybe once every two weeks through winter. They really don't need a lot of geraniums. The hot plant has been completely cut back and we can bring the netting in for the winter because we're actually going to replace those fence panels after Christmas. Now some plants will do fine over winter and these are charred and these will grow lovely and these are where I previously had broad beans growing. Okay so the crown jewel of food that we've grown this year is definitely this, the pumpkin. I'll cut that about here. Okay let's see what this weighs. Three thousand three hundred and forty two grams, three point three four kilos. Not bad at all. Okay, the next October job now is to get next year's bulbs planted. So I've got iris, which will flower in February, March, tulip scarlet baby, April May, uh, Cape Cod tulip, and allium for June. And then we've got some other tulips and bits and bobs as well but I'm going to try and do it so there's always going to be something that's flowering. So I'm just making my holes for my bulbs with a piece of bamboo cane. Make a hole, make it larger by turning it round and take that out and I shall drop the bulb into the hole. So I'm going to start with the iris bulbs and I'm going to put them at the back because they will be the ones that will flower first. And there's hops growing in this border, which will take over. But by the time the hops start to grow, the iris will have already done their job. And then each bulb will get a little covering of some foul wet compost, which it will enjoy. 
So that's the first row of bulbs in, and now it's just a case of carrying on. Well, it's the second week of November, and despite the fact that the temperatures have dropped, there's still plenty of colour in the garden. So these are all the geraniums that I put in the cold frame last month, still doing just fine. Right, we'll have a bit of November raised bed maintenance. So here's the first of my raised beds. And they're not in bad nick in all honesty, they just need a tidy, a mulch and then covering over for the winter to protect the bulbs and the roots of the plants that's in there. I'm going to begin by mulching with some cardboard actually. It breaks down, it'll feed the ground and it's something which is a biodegradable uh, thing which otherwise would have just gone in the recycle bin. So why not make it useful in the garden? I'm just going to layer it out in these small pieces like so around the plants and not damaging them so that's the first layer of mulch on it's hard to believe the marigolds are still such a picture but it's not the marigolds that we're now looking at. This is some spent malt grain from home brewing, from beer brewing more specifically. And I'm going to put this on as a bit of fertilizer and a bit of feed around the cardboard. So I've got to do that all the way down. So that's now the grain on but I haven't finished yet. Now I'm going to cover this all with a layer of fresh compost. A nice thick layer. And all this will sink as the cardboard rots down over time. And there's that. I've not done yet. Okay now I'm going to add some 10 mil gravel just to neaten it off and keep all of this loose material in place. Just pat it down. So I've just got the rest to finish now. Okay, that's just about done. I'm just neatening off. Washing the soil off the back.
And there we go. Job well done. One more to do tomorrow. So here's the border I did yesterday. And here is the one that's getting done today. And if you can hear that whistling sound, that's the red kite. Instead of cardboard pieces today, I've got a bucket full of tea bags, a year's worth of tea bags almost, which I want to use to mulch this border. And that absolutely stinks. Right, add a bit of compost on here. And once again with the gravel. Smooth it out. Tidy up with the horse pipe. And there we go. It's the 27th of November and autumn snow has fallen. I think this might be the end of the marigolds. It's December, the weather's changeable, and I need to sort this patch out. So that's everything cut back. I'm leaving it there as mulch, and I'm now going to add some ash from my wood burner on top of it. So that's the ash on. Now I'm going to add some more compost. Okay, next is cardboard. So this is what I'm trying to achieve with the cardboard. I'm trying to stop the nasturtiums from growing back through. It will also rot down over winter. I'm going to cover this up with pebbles. So I'm using 10 mil gravel. It'll hold the cardboard in place and it'll tidy the finish. So that's almost finished. Now the gravel is quite high. It's higher than the water feature, but that will subside over winter as the cardboard and the vegetation underneath it rot down. So I'm just filling my bucket now because I'm going to replace the water that's in the bird bath in the middle of the raised bed. So that's the raised bed done. Just one more Christmas job to do now. Well, it is Christmas.
So that's been The Garden 2021. Hope you enjoyed the film, folks. Merry Christmas, and I'll catch you in 2022. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.